Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. The Benchmarks Foundation has made a shocking discovery. It's found traces of uranium, zinc, arsenic, selenium, sulfur and lithium in Snake Park in Soweto. These heavy metals resemble those found in a nearby mine dump. Human exposure to the metals can lead to neurotic, neurotic disorders, autism, attention deficit disorder, mental retardation and cerebral palsy. Well, Benchmarks Foundation Chief Researcher David Van Veik joins us now to discuss this. Good evening, David. Thanks very much Good evening, um, for your time. Perhaps you can take us back to why you felt the need to conduct this research in the first place and how you went about doing it. Well, that. the Benchmarks Foundation is an affiliate organization of the South African Council of Churches. It was created specifically to look at ethical investment and corporate social responsibility. We've been doing reports over the last decade over, you know, the issues of mines, mining and so on. The big issue at the moment is mine closure. We've got 6,000 abandoned mines in South Africa. Now, if you look at the spatial arrangements of apartheid, most black, Asian and colored communities are to the south of Main Reef Road and they are actually below where the old mines used to be and where there are a lot of abandoned mine dumps and so on. And so the prevailing wind direction goes across Soweto and so it blows most of this dust into Soweto. Okay, and so on the northwestern edge of Soweto, there's Snake Park or Tulani, and just next to it is an old mine dump called Flakfontein, which used to be an old uranium and gold mine dump. And in the windy season, which is coming up now, that area is just absolutely blanketed in, in this dust. And we find an incredibly high number of children with cerebral palsy almost in every street in that community. And in 2017, we published a report and we expressed our concern. And then in 2018, we actually took some hair samples from people. We took dust samples and we took water samples. And we had the CSIR analyze those samples. We had laboratories in France analyze those samples. And we found, for example, in the water, uh, 30 parts per million of uranium is what is allowable. But there was 14,250 parts per million in the water that comes off that particular dump. Now, the problem is that you've got evaporation ponds below the dump and children swim in that water during summer. You can go there any time in summer and you'll find the kids swimming there. You know, cadmium, three parts per million allowable. There was 453 parts per million in the water tested. Um, arsenic, 10 parts per million allowed. There was 340 parts per million allowed. If we look at mercury, six parts per million, there was 320,56 parts per million in that water. And children are swimming there. It's not fenced off. It's not signposted. It's not secured. The National Nuclear Regulator requires that these waste dumps actually be secured, fenced off, and physical security uh, be there to prevent people from going in and out of those dumps, and people can just walk into them. And whose job is it to ensure that uh, uh, those who are supposed to behave responsibly mm. do in fact do so? Well, I think in the first instance, we're having 6,000 abandoned mines in this country, and that points to a problem. It means that the regulator is not actually regulating effectively. There is some 60 billion rands available for mine closure in the country. Very little of that money has actually been used because I don't think people know how to effectively close the mines. You know, it's a real So where does the money problem. go then? The money is lying somewhere, and it's not being utilized at the moment. It should actually be utilized. It should actually... All those dumps to the north of Soweto and to the east of Soweto, the, the, the Dipkloof dump, the Flakfontein dump, the Fuchelstreisfontein dump, all those dumps should actually be removed. We're talking about 6,000 mm. abandoned mines. Yeah. yeah. Now, you would have thought, uh, because it would seem, I mean, to me, that uh, the government is once again uh, found wanting. Well, I think is it, is it for is it because there's like oversight? Is it capacity issues? Do they simply not care? Have you been able to like put a finger on well, what could be the, the reasons they're the not newspaper, doing what they're supposed to do? In the newspaper articles earlier this week, the government responded. The Department of Mineral Resources responded, saying Flakfontein dump is not their responsibility because it was created before 1994. That's nonsense. You know, when when we negotiated democracy, we we agreed to take over some of these liabilities that we inherited from the past and that we would actually clean them up and prevent them from... Well, everything, if you remember, I mean, there were people who wanted to uh, get involved in some class 
actions. Mm -hmm. And in mm -hmm. fact, it was the government that actually mm -hmm. stopped them, yeah. citing yeah. Yeah, you know, what happened pre-1994 yeah. 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 in the build-up to this new dispensation. Yes. Um, we're not going to go back to the past. You see, the thing also is that um, you have a lot of these abandoned mines who are abandoned by very large corporations who sold them to smaller corporations. The smaller corporations couldn't carry the environmental liability and then they abandoned them. Um, you know, so it's, there's, there's the scale down. So there's a problem in law. The MPRDA, the Minerals Petroleum Resource Development Act, needs to be amended to make room for... Uh, a clause that says you cannot abandon a mine, let's say, five years before closure. You have to stay with the mine until it is closed. Because the big guys just sell it off and they say it's no longer our responsibility. We know of some big companies that sell off mines and they discount the mine closure fund as part of the price to make it attractive for smaller guys to buy it. But now, I mean, you, I mean, for what your research has shown mm -hmm. is that the level of all these elements mm -hmm. that were found there, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, they are, they far exceeded the yeah. allowable margins yeah. Yeah. in terms of uh, yeah. World Health yeah. Organization yeah. Um, safety standards. Yeah. Now, given Mm. The fact that our own government mm. doesn't seem to too keen mm. to actually do anything about this. Um, is there an opportunity out there perhaps mm. for people to perhaps mobilize, uh, you know, organizations mm. like the World Health Organization to actually mm. t have a look at this? And, and, well, and, and help uh, currently us? we're doing research as to how to rehabilitate this kind of depleted um, environment. And uh, we're looking, for example, at a plant called Hibiscus cannabis, which actu actually absorbs heavy metals in its roots, and the stem and the leaves can be used for a variety of things. That can be employment opportunities, and that can actually create economic opportunities for people in townships and so on. But we, we are afraid, because just recently, about two weeks ago, the, the Moifontein dump was auctioned off and some private guy bought it. And the land around it is completely contaminated. Next thing you will see, there will be housing going on there. And the people who buy the houses, if they buy the houses from the banks, they will be buying a death sentence because they are buying highly radioactive land. The Shaft 17 land was auctioned off two weeks ago. We know of the Chinese building low-cost housing uh, just off the M1 on an old mine, uh, mine area, which should actually be lying fallow for 40 years but they are actually building on there. So there's a great pressure for land in, in, in Johannesburg and for housing, but really there are some areas where you should not be building. Like a mine dump, for example, should have a 500 to 1,500 meter exclusion zone. Yet we find in deep Kloof certain property companies built right up to the mine dump, and the people in that area are very sick. We, we, we're actually working with them as well. But, I mean, clearly, David, I mean, no one in in the mm. position of power and responsibility mm. cares mm. right now. The question mm. is, what do we do? Because you can churn report mm. after report that, mm. Confirm, mm. Uh, that confirms what mm. this one has mm. just uh, mm. confirmed, mm. but if nothing is being done about it... Well, I think that the, the, the recourse that uh, civil society recently has had has been to the courts. You've seen the Tolobeni case, you've seen the Bakhatla Bakhafela case, you've seen the Bombela case, and so on. And eventually we will get to this point where no one wants to listen. We can show the paper trail of trying to engage. We can show um, uh, the amount of correspondence between us and mining companies, between us and government and so on, the number of meetings and so on that we've held, and they've gone nowhere. So at, that, at a certain point, we will have to say, OK, with the Center for Environmental Rights, uh, with the Legal Resource Center, with uh, Lawyers for Human Rights, we're going to have to do something. And it seems like uh, the department feels that it must be uh, managed through the courts. What a pity that we've got to litigate to get uh, people in positions of power and responsibility to do the right thing. Benchmarks Foundation Chief Researcher David Van Vey.